Welcome back to Agent Zero. Starting today, we are moving to 0 0.9 series of updates. In series 0.7 and 0.8, we implemented all the core features and tools the agent needs to operate, like the memory system, the web browser, search engine, document tool, and many others. Now in 0.9, we will focus on making everything click and make everything work seamlessly. The agent will become much more efficient and much more pleasant to use. So this is definitely one of the most important series of Agent Zero. Don't forget to visit agent-zero.ai to learn more about the project, its goals, and you can find links to all our social media here so you can join our community. Speaking of community, part of our web is the community platform where our members can create an upvote improvement proposals using the AOT token. Here you can contribute to our development even if you're not a programmer. As always, all you need to do to install the latest version is to docker pull the agent zero run image with the latest tag or with a specific version tag. You can see the easy installation guide video on this YouTube channel or on our GitHub. Now I've decided to start this series with two features that bring the most value when implemented early. And I'm sure you're gonna love this first one. It's a backup and restore feature that allows you to transfer your data from one agent zero instance to another. So here in settings, you can now find backup and restore tab where you can create a backup or restore a previously stored backup. This instance of Agent Zero we're looking at is already configured. I have my API keys here, my model settings, and I also have a simple chat history to demonstrate. So I'm gonna create a backup of this one by clicking Create Backup. And here I can see the configuration JSON of the backup. Here I can specify which data folders I want to include or exclude from the backup. By default, it is preset to all the folders you will probably want, like your custom knowledge and instruments, the memory of your agent, your .env file containing API keys, your settings file containing the rest of the agent configuration, and your chat and tasks history and those folders related to it. The config is editable, so if you want to include the root folder, for example, you can do it very easily. You can test your backup in a dry run before creating it. This will simulate creating the archive, telling you the number of files and the size of the backup. When you click Create Backup, it will automatically download the file for you. So now I have a zip file with all the files extracted from my Agent Zero instance. I think it's obvious, but still be careful about your backups, especially if they contain .env files with your API keys and your agent's chat history and memories. These can contain a lot of sensitive data. So now I'm gonna start a fresh Agent Zero container. I'm just gonna map the port 80. I'm not gonna do any more mappings or settings. And here I have a fresh instance of Agent Zero if I try to send a message now, it will fail because I don't have any API keys specified. Now let's try importing the backup. I just need to select the zip file. It will show me a summary of the backup. It will show me the files and folders included. And it will also warn me that after importing the backup, I should restart my Agent Zero instance for all the settings to apply properly. I can select how to deal with conflicting files, whether to override them, skip them, or backup. And I can also let the tool completely wipe all these folders before copying files. In most cases, that shouldn't be necessary. I can try the dry run again. It will tell me how many files to restore and if there were any errors. And if everything is okay, I can restore the files and then restart my instance. I can already see that my previous chat has been imported. All the settings and API keys should be properly set, meaning the chat should work just fine. So just like that, you can get a new version of Agent Zero to the point where you left off with the previous version. No more folder mapping necessary and no more conflicts.
The version 0.9 will contain a lot of smaller updates we are releasing every week now, so this will save you a lot of time in the long run. It will work even in development environments when you run your Agent0 Python code locally connecting to Docker using RFCs. Because thanks to the metadata included, the tool can translate your local development paths into Linux paths that will work in the Docker container. So you can transfer your backups between local development environment and the Docker container. The second new feature is related to how we work with prompt subfolders. And in a nutshell, thanks to prompt overriding, subordinate agents can now have specialized roles. Let me first explain what's the role of prompts in Agent0 system. Agent0 system is mostly prompt based, meaning everything that could be done using prompts has been done using prompts instead of code. This gives us much more freedom in guiding the agent and updating it. We don't need to change that much code. If we want the agent to behave in a different manner, if we want to change the way the agent delegates to subordinates or the way the agent uses tools, we can do all of that using prompt files and we don't have to touch the code base. So in prompt default, you can see all the prompt files that we use throughout the framework. Some of them are instructions going into the system prompt. Some of them are used as message responses for the agent. But in general, all the communication between the system and the agent is done using these prompt files. And because so much of the framework is written in plain English stored in text files, it gives the user the opportunity to change any of these files to change the framework behavior dramatically. For more convenience in the previous versions, we have introduced prompt overriding. So you can create other subfolders in the prompt directory, like the hacking edition here. And you can copy files from the default into your new folder and edit their contents here. This way, if this particular subfolder is used, all the files found in this folder with the same name as files that exist in the default folder override these default files and are used instead of them. So you don't need to copy dozens of files from the default folder, you just copy the ones you are interested in and you can change these. You can select the subfolder you want to use in settings, agent config, and the first field is agent zero prompt subdirectory. You can select from all existing subdirectories in the prompts folder. And in previous versions, this would apply to all the agents, every subordinate agent across the system. In this new version, this only applies to the original agent zero, the one agent you communicate with. And every agent when spawning subordinate agents can now decide on its own which subdirectory it wants to use for the subordinate agent, which of the profiles will suit the task the best. Now, if I tell Agent0 to use the researcher to gather info about Agent0 framework, when it calls the call subordinate tool, it can specify the prompt profile, and this will spawn the new agent using the selected prompt subfolder. We have added a few pre-built agent profiles to this release. The Agent01 is nothing new, it is the agent you communicate with, the first agent in the chain of subordinate agents. This one is instructed to be communicating with a human user, outputting in markdown, formatting everything nicely using emojis and math notation, etc. The hacker profile was introduced in version 8.6, I believe, when we merged the Agent Zero hacking edition with the main branch, making everything unified under one operating system. But the two new profiles are developer and researcher. These two have quite a lot of instructions added to follow their roles. For example, the researcher agent has a step-by-step -step guide how to conduct research and what the output should look like. So here you can see how easy it is. It only takes overriding like two prompt files to create a new agent role. And while you should keep in mind that these two agents are just prototypes, we will be improving them and we'll be adding more. The key takeaway here is that you can very easily create unlimited amount of your own custom sub-agents. And because Agent0 can access the file system as well, it has access to the prompts folder inside AO. It can actually help you. It can copy any files, edit them. It can experiment on its own, spawning new subordinate agents and test them. Actually, let me try that right away. Telling the agent to copy the researcher into analyst, changing it. 
So first we have the copy of the folder, now the list of files. Now the agent is reading those files, editing them, and testing the analyst agent. I don't think it did a really good job here. I think it edited just one of the files, but with more prompting, it would definitely improve. And we can see that it's definitely capable of creating new subordinate agents. Okay, those are the big updates of this version. If you manage to create a useful agent profile, please share with us on Discord or on our community platform or create a pull request for it so we can include it in Agent Zero standard. As always, thank you for your time. Big thanks if you subscribe to our channel and give us a star on GitHub. Don't forget to see our web and join our community on our social media. See you next time.